Smartphones complement modern living. Their bright touch input displays bring endless media sources from a variety of apps right into our pockets, and if smartphones are a little less durable and have less battery life than the mobile phones that preceded them, then so be it, because the trade-off is totally worth it, right? Well, the AGM M7 begs to differ. At first glance, this seems like everything the anti-smartphone. It is a rugged brick that harks back to the pre-smartphone era in more than just its looks, and it has these big touch buttons you can use in thick gloves, a four-day battery life, and that battery is replaceable, and an IP69K rating, all for just shy of $100. However, this phone isn't a complete throwback, as it features a modified version of Android 8.1, and this colour display is also a small touchscreen. Oh yeah, it also has a massive 3.5 watt speaker on the back. Um, I'm Ian from Make Use Of, and today we are looking at and giving away the AGM M7, a strange but wonderful, loud and unbreakable semi-smart phone. So before going on, I think we should really clarify what the AGM M7 actually is. Where the AGM X3 is a rugged smartphone with all of the features you'd get from flagship smartphones, the M7 is functionally not really a smartphone at all and harks back to the pre-smartphone era. It certainly has some smart features, but to compare it to other smartphones would be a mistake. It would be a bit like comparing a television to a computer with a full operating system. They have similarities but are functionally different. For that reason, this review tries to judge the M7 on what it actually is, an insane mishmash of ideas that certainly isn't for everyone, but is nonetheless compelling. I'm not sure I always succeed. The defining feature of AGM phones is their rugged, almost unbreakable design, and the M7 is no different. From, uh, for the form factor, it's actually quite large. It's 14 centimeters tall, which is a hair shorter than the Google Pixel 4a, but it feels big because it's almost two centimeters thick. It is chunky. But this size accommodates the big tactile buttons and a nice textured, easy to grip exterior. Uh, you also have a user defined button on the left side, along with a top mounted LED torch, um, which makes it a much more practical prospect than regular smartphone flashlights. Now, um, these glass screens can still be points of failure, even for rugged phones. So a smaller area of glass overall is probably an advantage for the M7. It does have a front and rear mounted camera, but we'll come back to that later as the real defining thing on this phone's exterior is the huge 3.5 watt rear speaker. I've personally never seen anything like this on a phone before, um, but the prospect of a super loud ringer that can be heard even over machinery or foul weather will be a draw to many. So just how loud is the M7's speaker? Well, the fact that I've come to the workshop will probably tell you everything you need to know. Because this is a really, really loud speaker. It's not even up at full volume yet, but it's actually painful to have it at full volume. And we have neighbors with a newborn baby. Uh, this would definitely be too loud for them. Yeah, the speaker's pretty loud. Um, so before moving on to the internal specs, it's worth talking about the battery bay. After you remove this cover, you are presented with yet another composite plastic seal. And this protects the battery, which is indeed removable. Uh, removable batteries are a thing I know many folks get excited about. It does come with a small problem that we will cover later in the review, however. For a full list of the M7 specs, head to the written version of this review linked in the comments. But some notable cuts are the MediaTek MT6739 chipset, which is a common favorite of uh, budget smartphone makers. It has one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of ROM, and the removable battery is 2,500 milliamp hours, sorry. Oh yeah, and the previously mentioned big kahuna of a speaker is 3.5 watts. Um, notable in here are the dual SIM bays, not that that's particularly exceptional for Android phones, but um, as a phone that might find its way to some quite remote areas, being able to choose the two suppliers likely to give you coverage, or suppliers that cross over country borders might be quite useful. Also notable is the fact that this is in essence an Android phone. Though heavily simplified in ways we will get into, it does mean you can attach Bluetooth devices to it, you can connect to Wi-Fi, or even use it as a hotspot for other devices. The pared down version of Android 8.1 that comes with the M7 features versions of WhatsApp, Facebook, TikTok, Skype, and Zello, along with some stock apps for calendar, clock, sound recording, and an FM radio. There is no Play Store on this phone, so what comes with the phone is what you get, and some things do work a little better than others. Others. Unusually for an Android device, you also can't sign into your Google account, making it hard to bring over contacts if you store them in the cloud, or sync the calendar unless you use some kind of USB connection. Um, you can also store this data on your SIM card, I suppose, but yeah, it's weird. Um, but this is likely a product of the simplified Android build. Outside of that, things like connectivity and setup feel identical to standard Android. It's a bit in between the two. 
The phone is IP69K rated, and IP69K is an obscure one to do with high pressure water jets and hot steam, so firefighting sauna lovers rejoice. Um, but I think most folks will be more familiar with IP68, which means it's completely sealed from dust ingress, uh, waterproof up to a certain pressure, most manufacturers say two meters underwater, and capable of taking a beating. That means it drops up to two meters onto stone floors. Um, it is also functional from minus 20 centigrade up to 60 Celsius. And uh, in drop tests, the M7 was completely solid. I did manage to dent the speaker grate on the back of it, didn't change the sound. Um, this battery cover would fly off sometimes, but the second cover kept the battery safe and in place. Uh, drop tests from 1, 1 1.5 and 2 meters all went much the same. The phone just bounces, and other than a few scuff marks here and there, it is completely undamaged. The phone has also survived being forgotten in a lake, used as a mud shovel and being thrown around by a rampaging toddler for the best part of a whole day. I also genuinely accidentally dropped it out of my pocket while riding my bike and it narrowly avoided getting run over by a bus, which would have been kind of an amazing ruggedness test. Um, now, this is another phone that claims the MIL STD 810 standard, which is a military standard for consumer items, which sounds fancy, but there's no consumer standard to do with the military. It's, uh, it's a completely unregulated thing. It is a meaningless metric of toughness. And it's sad, really, because AGM have their own standard for ruggedness. They take it seriously. It is a hallmark of their phones. And once again, it seems like they have nailed it. This phone would survive things that I would not. And it seems a shame that they have to rely on the same strange standard other people use that's essentially meaningless. Now, what's good about this phone? On the surface, the AGM M7 is a simple phone designed to have a good battery life and take an absolute beating and also make a lot of noise. It does every one of those things perfectly and a phone that feels like a pre-smartphone era with WhatsApp is a great touch as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the inclusion of the Zello push to talk app is something not useful to me now, um, but the user definable button on the side here is what sets it to transmit using Zello as standard, like a walkie talkie. That's something I would have found incredibly useful in previous jobs. Uh, for me, Skype is also a great touch as someone who lives in a different country from the rest of my family. Um, now, these top mounted LED, as I mentioned before, it's bright and it's in a position that actually makes it a useful torch. Oh, it phones off because I took the battery out. <laughs> um, even when it's locked, a long press of the zero key toggles the torch and the keypad is usable, as previously mentioned, even in the thickest of gloves. In fact, a strange byproduct of uh, taking slightly longer with the keypad in general means that using the phone with gloves on doesn't really change the user experience at all. Um, the speaker is loud, as I've shown. Um, it doesn't distort, at least not that I noticed, and it gives a cl as close to a rounded sound as you could expect from something of this size. This charging dock is quite a nice touch. It's actually sort of useful, but it is an optional extra. However, it only costs $9.90 directly from AGM. Um, and the M7 that I got came with a fairly respectable set of budget waterproof headphones made by JBL and AGM in tandem. I'm not sure if these, uh, these actually come with every purchase of the M7, but it was a very nice touch. So, what do I not like about the M7? Well, the camera in general. Um, unfortunately, low quality cameras paired with low fidelity screens were little more than a gimmick when they emerged over a decade ago, and it's no different here. I mean, the camera could be used as a functional way of taking quick notes if the lighting is good, but nothing more. The removable battery, however, I think is a great idea, and I applaud AGM for making it work in an IP69K rated phone. The only problem is that there doesn't appear to be any way to get spare batteries from AGM. They aren't listed on their website, their EU after sales website gives a 404 error, and I couldn't find any identifying information on the battery to get them from third party sellers. I'm sure AGM could provide them, but at the time of recording I haven't had any reply from them about it. However, to, to be fair, it was only a couple of days ago I asked them about this. Um, no Play Store or Google account integration may, may seem like a bad thing, but in fairness the M7 advertises that fact on the purchase page. I, as I said before, I don't want to judge the M7 on what it isn't. Uh, that its failings don't really come from what it lacks. Instead, they're more a product of uh, poorly integrating what is already there. I'm not fully convinced that some of the smarter elements of this phone went through much quality assurance. Because when mobile phones initially began adding basic browsers to their firmware, they were a nice idea in principle, functionally almost unusable, but they did sort of work. The M7 falls into a similar trap, but for different reasons. The Android browser does work for most basic Google searches, and you can even log into your email services or watch YouTube. Uh, you can enable the desktop mode of the Android browser to log into various services, but once again, the issue here is the screen. It's just too small and too low resolution to really work with. And when you pair that with the fact that the browser requires frequent use of the touch screen to access some buttons and selections, uh, it quickly becomes something you would only really use in a pinch. The same is true of the TikTok and Facebook integrations. Fine ideas in principle, but not really much fun to use with the small screen and keypad. Um, I never had too much problem, problem with some of the other things. 
Uh, WhatsApp is fine, but typing in general is actually quite painful on this phone. Um, I'm sure some of you are thinking, of course, it's a keypad. That's not easy to type on, but to people of a certain age, keypad typing was the norm. When I was a teenager, a seemingly revolutionary technology called T9 predictive texting made writing messages much faster. Instead of picking each letter individually, you could just tap each letter key once and the phone would predict words based on the possible letter combinations. It would then put those words in place and allow you to change them after the fact when it got it wrong. It was instant and it was great. The M7 does have word suggestions but they pop up after the fact and it doesn't have any single keypad pressing input. What word suggestion there is works so slowly that I never really ended up using it. Now, I'm aware that this won't be much of an issue to some folks. T9 predictive texting was popular for really a relatively small slice of time. Some older folks never even adopted it. Some younger folks won't have even heard of it. And I can only assume that that is the case for the AGM team. As when com comparing the typing user experience of this phone to phones from 20 years ago, this is actually a bit of a step backwards and somewhat of a missed opportunity. T9 emulation for Android has existed for some time. I don't know why it is not here. In fact, if there's one uh, flaw in general to this phone, it's the Android implementation it uses. It is still clearly biased towards a touchscreen and the keypad suffers as a result. This is no problem when using the M7 like an old school mobile phone. It just makes the smart elements feel a little bit half-baked and a little bit clunky overall. The thing is, once you've settled your expectations, even these seemingly glaring flaws don't matter all that much. Criticizing elements of the M7 doesn't change its overall experience. It was an experience I was not expecting to enjoy, but I thoroughly did, and I still do. This hasn't replaced my smartphone, but it does sit alongside it. It became clear while making this review that a phone with one foot in the mobile phone era and one in the smartphone era is never going to be able to stand up to either one of those things individually, especially sitting as it does at the $100 price point. Similarly, the points, both good and bad, I've brought up about this phone in the review might not read as good or bad to you depending on what expectations you have when you hear the words mobile telephone. What I will say is this. After a couple of days, the flaws here were mostly forgotten and this hybrid monster of a phone began to make more sense to me. It's not going to replace a smartphone and I don't think it would even be a very good phone to give to a non-tech savvy person or perhaps uh, an elderly person, but I am still using it and I think it comes down to what the M7 offers. Because for some folks, limitations are liberating. We've grown so accustomed to always having the digital world in our grasp, it can be especially difficult to drag yourself away from it when you're in positions where you shouldn't, or for example, when you are a freelancer with no concept of a healthy workday. For the nine days I reviewed this phone, I carried my smartphone with me but turned off just in case I needed it. It turns out I didn't. And after day three, I didn't even really miss it. The M7 takes away everything a smartphone gives and then adds back a few things that you might need. And yes, the TikTok and Facebook integrations are clunky and yes, the browser and text input is a bit of a mess, but it is functional enough to use in a pinch. And I've done things I haven't done in years. There are albums on the memory card here that I uh, got meant to get around to listening to years ago. I've actually been selectively downloading podcasts and putting it on here uh, rather than just listening to whatever is there. And I relatively quickly have let go of that feeling that every interesting thing that happens in my life must be documented uh, with photos that I will likely never look at again. It's nice not to worry about battery life. It's nice to know I can just throw this in my pack and head out riding my bike or running or even while swimming, things I enjoy doing, and know that not only will this phone be okay, but that it doesn't even let me worry about the things I really should have left in the home office anyway, like emails or Slack. I, for one, have found myself sitting in beautiful places in the world, looking at other beautiful places in the world on Reddit. This is not a retro throwback, but it is not quite a smartphone either. The AGM M7 is what it is, and for some people it represents the balance they desire. I have no idea if AGM had this in mind when they threw this insane combination of features at a phone, but it works for me, and it might work for you. So I hope this review has been useful. Um, we are, as I said, giving away an AGM M7. Um, uh, all you need to do to enter the competition is head to the link in the description to the Make Use Of website. And if you would like to have an extra chance of winning when you enter, just use the keyword rugged. That is R-U-G-G-E-D, rugged. Um, but yes, as I said, I hope this review is useful to you. And I hope you have a great day.